Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In this multi-part video series, I'll be installing my metal roofing system. All the video parts for this series will be listed in the description below, so make sure you check them out. This is a standing seam metal roofing system. If you've done any research on roofing, this is one of the best options for a tiny house. There's different types of metal roofing. The standing seam is the best because it has no exposed fasteners on the top of the roof. There's going to be some that go on the sides and I believe you can install this so that there's absolutely no exposed fasteners but I'm going to be installing some on the outside. Now a disclaimer, I have never installed metal roofing before. I have done asphalt shingles, I've done rolled roofing, I have done trimming and everything else that goes along with a roof, but I've never installed standing seam metal roofing. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video. Like all my videos, I might go over some portions of the project, but you're missing a lot of what actually happens. So do your research before you start your roofing so that you can be well educated. This is the first step that I've done on my tiny house where I'm extremely nervous about. Uh, I've been researching it for about a month now. I literally haven't filmed anything for a month. Been saving up to buy this uh, this metal roofing. This project's gonna be right around a thousand dollars. So let's get started. What a minute! Peanut, you wanna be in the video? No, I don't want to be in the video anymore. You're mean to me. Come here, love. Come here, stupid. Don't want to come up. No. Uh, oh, are you okay? What happened, love? What happened? What is this berber on you? It's a berberry. Oh, look at the camera. People want to see you, Peanut. I don't want to see the peoples. I don't like them. They're mean to me. They always want me. I don't want to be wanted. You still smell like a fucking skunk, Peanut. God. That's been like three weeks. Well, if you gave me a bath on a regular basis, it wouldn't smell like one, you dumbass. So let's go up on the roof and I'm going to show you what I did prior to installing this roof. Sorry for the uh, shakiness of the camera but I've already installed all my fascia trim and then all the rake trim and then whatever that trim is on the other side. I'm gonna assume it's a, it's a fascia too, um, even though it's kind of a ridge. Now this is all PVC plastic trim with a wood grain finish put into the outside of it. I used all galvanized trim nails to install it. I didn't film any of the uh, trim installation because I was crunched on time when I was doing this step but it's pretty simple you basically want to make sure that all your rafters are nice and straight sometimes you got to trim them and make sure you have a perfectly straight line it takes a lot of uh, skill to sight stuff and a lot of tinkering to make sure everything works out nice and perfect and I also installed the uh, soffit for the for the gable end for the gable over end it's probably not a soffit though it's probably got some other name now keep in mind I'm working 13 feet off the ground so this is gonna be really difficult to film so I've actually been living in my tiny house for about two months now and I've had this paper this roofing paper on my roof and I haven't had any problems I had a blue tarp on there for a little bit and it started leaking so I went and bought this synthetic paper and it's been perfect for uh, two months now so I did some research about roof paper a lot of people use tar paper to put between the plywood and the metal roofing what happens with tar paper is it it, um, it heats up and it adheres to the plywood and also adheres to the metal roofing and since these two types of materials expand and contract at different rates it doesn't allow that to happen and what will happen is your, your joints will end up buckling up and cracking open. So they made this product specifically for, for roofing. Now this was $100 for a roll that did like a thousand feet, thousand square feet. I only needed like 200 square feet or something like that. So what I was thinking is I could have used this stuff for my house wrap on the outside. So when you're purchasing your Tyvek paper, you might want to consider purchasing this and using this as your home wrap as well. You could use gray shield with a smooth finish on it. You don't want to use the granulated because the granulated will act like sandpaper and over time it'll, uh, it'll rub through your metal roofing. So you want something that's smooth and it won't allow the metal roofing to adhere to it. I've seen people install tar paper underneath this synthetic paper which I don't see what the point is because this material works just fine. Now I've taped all my joints and I've also overhung the the paper onto the fascia and the rake edges and I taped all those. Now that I have the trim and the roof paper installed I can start to install the metal roofing. So this is drip edge. This piece goes against your fascia and this overhangs your roof and this piece right here goes on top of your roof. 
Now it's recommended that you place the paper over on top of this surface. Uh, what I'm going to do is just take some tape and I'm going to tape this after because as of right now this is pretty sealed up pretty good. So I'm going to hold this end flush with the outside of the tiny house. So the manufacturer provided me with these screws here. Uh, they have a really large head on them. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be okay. I kind of want it to sit flat. Personally I would use some uh, roofing nails with a flat head on them but since these were provided for me I'm going to use these and hope it's okay. When I do my roofing if, it, if I see it being a problem I'll remove these and replace them with nails. So these screws I'm going to install approximately every one foot. Hi, I'm in the background. Hey guys, look at me. I'm down here. I'm down here. Look at me. Look at me. Hey. hey. Motherfucker. I'm installing these screws about an inch below the top of this, uh, this piece. That way I'm going to do some weather stripping right here and it'll be below the, the screw holes here. So water ever comes up it'll stop at the weather stripping before it gets up to these screws. Since these aren't self-tapping screws, I'm just going to take a nail. I'll put it on there. Get some thick stuff. Just put a hole in it right there. That way the screw bites quicker. I guarantee you the camera's going to fall off the roof one time. Just once though. I'm not sure what's recommended for a overlap on the rake edge. I used to do six inches of overlap when I did asphalt shingling. I'm going to go about four inches here. This stuff is really thick compared to uh, what I used to use. I'm going to make sure that it's, it's pulled in tight. Now this, this rake edge is meant for a steeper pitch roof. So what's happening is that underside here is sticking out. But as long as the top of that rake edge is tight to the fascia, you'll be okay. So you just want to make sure it's pulled in as far as you can get it. Sometimes you got to hit this in there to get it tight. Just put some tack nails to hold it temporarily. And at the same time, those are also going to be my, my pre-drilled uh, pre holes, kind of. So to finish it out, I'm going to have to cut a piece. So I'm going to hook on to the rake edge on the end here. And I'm going to measure to the end here, plus about four inches. Let's go about about 23 inches. I'm going to take a new piece. I'm going to mark 23 inches. Now this cut on top will not be exposed, but I still want it to be kind of straight. This part here will be exposed, so I'm going to try to make this as straight as possible. So you can cut this with some tin snips. Um, I'm just going to use my angle grinder with a metal cutting disc on it. It'll be easier. Now even without cutting this stuff, this stuff is sharp, so I know you're going to comment where your gloves and all that stuff, but listen, if you feel like you're going to get cut from it, wear some gloves, wear some Kevlar bodysuit, do all those safety things that you think are necessary. So if you look at the rake edge, it's got that bend up right here and this right here. Now I could go like this and leave that like that, but what I should do is try to slide that underneath that. Now I didn't do that, I didn't run this underneath this one like I should have. So now I'm going to try to get it back in there. So I was able to get this piece underneath there, I re-screwed all those. Now I'm looking at this and I don't really like it. That one's really, really bad. And what I'm thinking is if I push this up, clamp it, and then drill a hole here and put a rivet right there, it'll hold this in place. Please show your support for Tiny House Customs because these videos are next to impossible to film. So I put a drill bit underneath here to get up under there and then I use these, uh, these benders to bring it up tight. Had to buy a new tool. Everybody loves tools, right? Yeah, you're a tool. Peanut, shut up. You should never use a rivet gun. There's different size things for different size rivets. So you just take this tool. Wow, this one's high tech. Not very impressed with that. More than I would do on a professional job. So, so I came over and I fixed this one so that it was tight, or tighter than it was before. And it looks good. Now that's a little bit of overkill, but so the last step is I'm just going to tape this seam right here. Since this paper was supposed to go over the top of this, this will kind of help that problem. 
But I believe that's going to be it for this video. Uh, next video, I'm going to be installing the roof panels, maybe. Yeah. I'll do the roof panels next video, and then I'll do the trim on that part three, probably. Hopefully, we can make this three parts. And I'm assuming that was around 10 minutes. I know there wasn't a lot of demonstrating how to do things in this video, but I believe it was pretty informative um, as to things that you might need to know before you start your metal roofing. Uh, again, if you're uncomfortable doing something like this, make sure you uh, call a professional to do it for you. But as always, thanks for watching, guys. If you uh, are new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you would like to uh, show your support for Tiny House Customs, you can click up there and show me some love. Um, if this video was helpful for you, saved you some money, why don't you show me some love, you know? Everyone likes some love. I do, I want some lovings. Give me some lovings, please. Hey, Nat. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. Okay, all right, you're at like a 10. I need you to be at a two, thanks.